Ryan Little. <laughs>
um, for her character. This is how she is. She's really stoic. She's really just devoid of um, emotions, like on the outside, but on the inside, she's definitely like, she's the type of person who holds too much in. You can kind of tell like she's not the genetic daughter of the two uh, sims I just created and that will come later on in the story. Um, I, I love this outfit on her. I, th I think it suits her. I think it suits the vibe of Tim Burton and I did go with a lighter color but I did think it worked. Now for her brother. Oh, I'm so excited for you guys to see her brother. My sister hated him. She said he looked so creepy and I want to know what you guys think about his appearance. I loved the way I created him. Um, like I, w I wanted to give him a different hair as well, but I thought that I thought the hair I gave him was spot on as well. Oh, here comes the creepy. You can or you can already tell he's going to be creepy. I know the traits he has now are gloomy and the dog lover, but he's not. Uh, later on, I'm gonna change these and I'm gonna give him the maker and the erratic traits. Um, oh, okay, I gave him <laughs> I gave him a skin overlay that has boobs, uh, but I fixed that. And his neck, for some reason, is messed up, and I I didn't know how to change that. Um, so for his traits, uh, I gave him the maker and the erratic trait because. Um, I don't know, I see him as a very unstable sim. So unlike um, the first two sims I made, where they might have maybe like were pushed to that level, um, Jonathan was kind of born like this, like he was already like that. Um, and I, w I, w I would love to elaborate more, but I can't because I don't know, it would give away stuff about the story. So there he is, I gave him some veins. So this is Gigi's daughter and my dumbass i was supposed to create her as a teenager but i created her as a child because i i don't know i i forgot there was gonna be a time skip i guess and i created her as a child but later on you will see her as a teenager don't don't worry and she look, she looks really cute as a teenager when i aged her up and oh you guys have to see her uh she looked cute as a child as well but i have my child CC is very limited. I did my best with what I had. And I, th I think I still did a good job. Um, I look, look how many dresses I have. Not too many. I didn't have any uh, proper like um, leggings to give, to give her under her dress. So I ended up changing her dress to something else. I kind of struggled with the shoes as well. Um. <laughs> I have no shoes, I have no clothes, I need to go CC shopping, I just don't want to, it's boring to shop for kids. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna change the dress, I think, right after this, and then after that comes a special treat, because I also gave them a cute little pet. Um, I loved the way I styled the pet, and I can't wait to show you guys. Um, right after Kath Catherine, by the way, I love the name Catherine so much, oh my god. Um, and this is their cat. 
I thought it would uh, only be fitting for them to have a black cat. Um, and I love, I, I love just posing the cat so I can continue to paint him. It was so funny to me. And I thought it would be cute to give him this little like heart on his chest. Just, you know, s style choice. Um, and now, now that they're all done, let's get to the story. Okay, so our story starts in Forgotten Hollow. Obviously, this would have been the best world to do it in. Look how gorgeous it is. Look how Tim Burton it is. And this is our family. This is the mom. I think I called her Diane. And this is the dad. He's sick all the time. He's always napping. He's He never leaves the house. Which leaves her in the house as well because she doesn't have a job. She doesn't have a family. She moved away from her family to be with him. You can tell she's really upset. She's trapped at the home with her sick husband who she can't leave because she doesn't have anything or anywhere else to go except for him and this house, this huge mansion. <laughs> and you can kind of tell like she turned bitter. Like she's really, she does not look happy. She hates the fact that she has to sit and care for her husband. She didn't even, I don't think the marriage was based on love. I think she just married him because she was out of options or she didn't have any other choice. So now she lives in the middle of nowhere in Forgotten Hollow with a sick husband she doesn't love. He's rich, they, ha they live in a mansion and they have two kids, they're twins. For her, she doesn't really see any way out. But there are two people in the house other than the family who seem perfectly content in the house and I think they're in the same boat as Diane and her husband they have no one else except for each other it seems but I do think these guys have found something in this lonely mansion they found each other and this one is called Dorothy she's been working in this mansion for a very long time way before Gigi came into the picture so Gigi came to, le to, to work with this family but she brought her child with her because she could not leave her child they had nowhere else to go I could not find the cat for a second so here's the cat here's the family cat she looks oh, or he he looks really creepy but there he is climbing up the stairs and while those guys have found comfort in, in each other, this lady, she does not like it. She does not like that other people can find love when she can't. She cannot stand the fact that other people can be happy. And I think Gigi is stressed because Diane does not, like they allow her to keep her, her child with the, <gasps> whoa. So I think Diane has had enough. Diane is like, we take care of you and your child and we keep you here. I do not like this public displays of affection. You have to leave and take your child. So she's trying to fire Gigi. And Gigi seems really upset. Like Dolores keeps flirting with her and she doesn't want her to do that because she's she lost her job. She lost her job now. Look at look at the way look at the way she's looking at Diane. She's really angry with her. But I do think it looks like she's had enough. <laughs> she's smiling. I think she made up her mind about something. She's tired of being the underdog. She's tired of being threatened all the time and not feeling secure in her position or her child. Yeah, yeah. They know Diane. <laughs> they know. Gigi's like, fine. You want me to leave? I'll leave. No hard feelings. That's okay. And I think Dolores kinda gets it. They understand each other so well. They've been working with each other for years. They get each other. She knows Gigi can't be just happy with leaving. So she's playing along. She's like, yeah, all is good. It's all fine. I'll help you find someone else in the morning. While this is going on, she's like, I expect you to leave first thing in the morning. Oh gosh. She's like, yeah, of course. First thing in the morning, ma'am. And while she's back in her room for the evening, she always does a little reading before she goes to bed. And her husband is never with her. She leaves him to sleep downstairs on the couch because she can't 
really be bothered to help him out. So, she's reading now for a little bit just before she goes to bed, not knowing what's going on downstairs in the kitchen. So downstairs, it looks like Gigi and Dolores are plotting. No one else is in the house. The husband is sick on the couch. She obviously gets nervous sometimes. I feel like Dolores is like to me, like when I see when I see her, like also when I created her, I feel like she's not like mentally I don't know, like m mentally I feel like she's not all there. Like Gigi is talking about some serious planning and some serious plotting and she just keeps smiling. She's like, yes. She, she keeps smiling because she doesn't think it's a big deal. She's like, yeah, you want us you want us to get rid of them and you know take over the mansion. No one else is gonna know. We know everything. We've been here for years. It's like she doesn't consider that there are repercussions. And Gigi's being really emotional. She's ta she's talking out of emotion because if Diane fires her and she kicks her out with her child, where else is she gonna go? She has nowhere else to go. So this feels like the end of the line for her. This that, that there's nothing else she can lose. I think Dolores here is suggesting she takes care of the husband while Gigi gets to go take care of Diane and I think they finally agreed on a the plan they seem to be on the same <laughs> and she, she's finalizing it with okay then love you love you dearest I'll talk to you when I'm done first up Dolores is gonna take care of the dad the dad who looks really tired now and i think he's due for another nap and that's really sad because i feel like that's all he does like he takes a nap and then he wakes up for a little bit and then he can't help but go back to take a nap because he's re he's really sick and they're they're just let's just say where they are they don't have doctors and i think Dolores knows this oh my god the cat is there the cat is there so, Dolores is here. Where is he? There he is, sound asleep. And Dolores is just like, yeah, there we go, cracks her back. He's really weak, and I know she's really like thin and frail, but despite her frail appearance, the cat doesn't care. The cat doesn't care that her owner is dying. There she is. She did it. She got rid of the husband. And he's just simply dead. Gigi is here. She's happy. About, she's happy about it. Look at her. She's smiling. The Grim Reaper is here to reap his soul. And they're happy. They're like, yeah, we did that. Oh, man. Look, look how happy they look. <laughs> and they're watching this whole thing. It's like their reward. And he's dead. Gone. Just as the sun rises. While her husband dies, Diane has no idea. She's still in her room. And Gigi just comes in. <gasps> Where did that come from? Where did that come from? I don't think Diane understands what's happening right now. She <gasps> and yeah. Oh gosh, Gigi looks so content. She looks at peace. She literally looks like she's at peace at last. Oh my god, why is she doing that? She didn't die. Oh, 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 no, she did. Sh she died. And Diane is also dead now. And finally, Gigi's at peace. She's like, she smells. You smell. Oh, look how happy she is. She's so happy. They did it. They managed to get rid of both. No no one is gonna know. Both of these people have no family. Nobody cares about either people. So it's just her and Dolores now. It's just them. They're celebrating their victory. But now they're stuck in this house. Well, they're not stuck. They have the house. They get to have the house. But they're stuck with the kids. And, you know, why not have kids? They're both older women. They're not planning on having the kids of their own. So why not take the kids alongside the mansion? So 
now it's several years later. These two are finally happy together with the mansion they took. They took the money, they took the last name, they took everything. Look at them, they look really happy. <laughs> and this is her daughter coming to say hi. Look at her, she looks really cute. Look at those huge eyes. I don't know what's... <gasps> dun, dun, dun. But then, hidden within the confines of the house are those two. Just always inside never leaving the house there they still they still get to have a dignified life but yeah in my mind in my mind they keep them in the house because jonathan uh jonathan is a little dangerous he likes to poke people with stuff and the only person he listens to is his twin sister she's kind of stuck with him <laughs> Look at her. Sometimes she can't stand him, but most of the time she does. So yeah, the traits I gave him were erratic and a maker. So he, he really enjoys spending his time in his room, coming up with ways to... How do I say this without coming off? Coming up with ways to prank people. Let's say prank. But yeah, the only person, the only person he ever listens to and this come around is his sister. It's kind of a... You know how they say sometimes, you know, the past repeats itself? So Jenny's kind of stuck with him the same way her mom was stuck with her husband. And she can't live her life, she can't do anything because she has to stay with her brother or her brother is going to be a menace to other people. And I do feel bad for Jenny, I really do. Like it's not her fault. Also in my mind she would never like be outwardly angry with him. Like the reason he doesn't like rebel against her as much, she needs, she needs to go to the toilet. But the reason why he doesn't rebel against her that much is because she's very patient with him and he feels like she's the only one he can trust. You can see the crazy in his eyes. You can see the crazy in all their eyes. But yeah, this is the like my small Tim Burton family I came up with. I don't know. You guys tell me. Was I successful in creating my own Tim Burton family? Did this story make sense? I would really love to know what you guys think. I've been <laughs> I've been working on this the entire week. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you again next time. Bye.